We're continuing our great celebration of the appearance of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So today we're going to hear about his Abhishek ceremony, how he was bathed as the Lord. And it's fitting because we are going to be performing that royal ceremony this evening. We've been celebrating Lord Chaitanya's appearance since Friday. So we're continuing. We went into a few lectures where we spoke about specifically Lord Chaitanya's pastimes when he returned from Gaya, which is a holy place in India where people go to honor their ancestors and they worship Vishnu. There's a place where Vishnu's lotus feet are present, where his footprints, where he specifically defeated a very terrible demon. And that place, there's worship that goes on there where people go. So when he went there to honor his father who had recently passed, Lord Chaitanya met his spiritual master, Ishwar Puripad, and received Gopal Mantra and began chanting that mantra. And the moods of love of his beloved Srimati Radhika coming through the line of her maidservants entered into his heart. And he began to weep in ecstasy. And when he came back to his hometown, he was completely transformed. No one could even understand what had happened. They could barely recognize him. His personality was completely different. Externally, everything is the same, but his personality, his mood was completely different. He could no longer speak. He was only calling out, Krishna, Krishna, where is Krishna? How to find Krishna? Where is the Lord of my life? How do I find my beloved? And he met for the townspeople. And, you know, when you're with people who aren't interested in love of God, then you can kind of play the game of worldly life. So, you know, he was smiling with everyone and they were, you know, the elders were patting his head or putting their hand on their heart, his heart and he was speaking with them. But after he met with the townspeople, he went with a small group of his intimate circle. They were friends before, but not so intimate because this circle of friends he brought around him, like we're a circle of friends, right? So this intimate circle, it's like, how do we know each other now? I just met you, right? But I feel like we're an intimate circle of friends. How? How is it possible? So they were devotees of Krishna and there was an underground bhakti movement. It's just starting in, in Navadvip. Advaita Acharya, incarnation of Sada, Shiva, and Lord Vishnu was present. And Gadadhar Pandit, incarnation of Radharani was present. Srivas Pandit, incarnation of Narad Muni was present. Many other associates were present. And many other associates were being born around different areas of India, South India, West Bengal, East Bengal, Bihar, North India, and so on and so forth. But he gathered these devotees and he said, I want to speak to you. I've had a transformation, a spiritual experience. I've been speaking about this recently. The goal of our spiritual life is the experience of love of God. Not directly. The, the goal of our life is to serve God. <laughs> right? That's the nature. But in that relationship, you experience a joy of love that is beyond anything you could even imagine. The joy of pure love. It's called premananda, right? The joy of pure love of God. What is the joy of love of God? That's what is our mission is to help people follow the practice or come to appreciation of the practice or begin the practice or anyhow go along that method of bhakti to come to the state of the joy of pure love of God, which is the wealth of Srimati Radhika. We talked about this like a week or two ago. You know, we're working on our, you know, dysfunctional website. <laughs> Why? Because, you know, just it's enough keeping the lights on and keeping functional here. But you need a very clear vision of what you want to do. What, what is your service? And you have to realize that because there's a thousand things you could do. A thousand things you can focus on, right? What is your focus? And that's something you should realize. What is your focus? Right? So 
We are waiting until the focus becomes crystal, crystal clear. You know, that you can see not just your reflection, right? Cheto Dharpana Marjanam, you cleanse the mirror of the heart, it becomes crystal clear. Then you can see yourself. And then that is, you know, we've been hearing also in Krishna's pastimes about Radharani, how she has a jewel, which was she can see Krishna, Shamantaka Mani. And Krishna has a jewel that he wears, Koshtuba Mani, which he can see Radharani. So in, in your soul, there is your nature, your spirit, your swarup, your form, your qualities, your nature, your name, everything. And it's the process of diksha, by chanting the mantras that will bring you to that purified state. Diksha is a purificatory process. So that all the, you know, it's like a muddy water, all the mud is removed and it becomes crystal clear. And then you can see your own reflection, your own spirit, but then in your heart, you're not alone. God is also present. There's you as an individual spirit and there's God. Those are both eternal, the spirit, individual and the Supreme Spirit. They're two eternal realities and our individual spirit is with us in our body. We are Kshetra the knower of the field of our body. If I pinch you, you feel it. I don't feel it. Unless I'm a little sympathetic. <laughs> but that's just like, a, a, there's a layer of separation in that feeling. So I'm the knower of my field. But that supreme spirit is present with every individual spirit. That is God. So when you look, when you clarify, when you become that crystal clear stage where I can now, my consciousness is clear. My consciousness is pure, the pure state of Krishna consciousness. I can see myself, but the goal isn't self-consciousness, right? The goal isn't self-consciousness, it's Krishna consciousness, to be aware of God, to be present with God, to see God. And in that relationship, there's a, a joy because it's the ultimate discovery, right? To realize God in your relationship with God. Maybe many people think they know about God, or hear about God or read about God, but to realize God, to realize Krishna and your relationship of love with God that is the abode of supreme joy. Love for God is joyful, right? It's not dry, it's not boring. It's ever fresh, all abundant, all blissful. So that joy of love of God is our focus, serving that joy of love of God serving that expression of love of God, serving the servants who have realized that, serving the devotees. But that is the aim. What is that joy of love of God? We were talking about that, remember? People think, oh, how can that be your mission statement? It's like, that's too, you know, far-fetched. The joy of love of God. You know, we've heard about God. We've heard about love of God, but the joy of love of God, the unbridled joy, the explosive ecstasy, We've been hearing about Lord Chaitanya's pastimes, how he came home, met with the townspeople, and it was like he could not even speak anymore. So he, he went to a more private place with that intimate circle of friends and said, I want to tell you about my experience. I want to tell you about my experience. And he said, I went to do the final rites for my father who had passed. And I visited so many places. I was very inspired seeing great devotees of Krishna everywhere, chanting and singing. And then I went to a special place, Bada Padma Tirtha. That means the place where the Lord's feet are present, where he placed his lotus feet. Imagine if I were to tell you like, there's places in Vrindavan, there's certain places where the Lord's incarnation, he appeared. And like oftentimes, like it's his, it's said that matter, this material world, the, the power of the incarnation of pure divine love in the form of God appears on earth and he's walking on the stones and they melt. So then his feet are present. There's places where we visit in Vrindavan where Krishna was born and we go on these treks. We, we'll go one day, right? We'll go up the hill to this place where it's not Govardhan, but there's places where we're allowed to walk and you can see there's Krishna's footprints. And they're not just normal footprints. It's like, you know, it's footprints, but then it like melts a little bit, right? Because <laughs> that's how it happens. The melt, the stones, matter cannot contain this ecstasy of love of God. So when ecstasy of love of God starts to manifest, even in the material body, it starts to 
to like starts to transform. We've talked about this, how the caterpillar, caterpillar becomes a butterfly. How does a cat, tell me, please. How does a caterpillar become a butterfly? I don't know. Huh? So I'm sure there's a scientific. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's called metamorphosis. Okay, great. We have our, Krishna Chandrapur is visiting Nashville, so we have our uh, Google Scholar here. Good. How does a caterpillar become a butterfly? So there's a transformation that takes place where matter ultimately, the power behind matter is spirit. All right. Prakriti, the power behind even nature is the goddess, Shakti, the spirit. You have our answer? It is metamorphosis. Metamorphosis. Okay. Can you, can you define metamorphosis in that stage? Uh, <laughs> um, Sure, like a set one sentence explanation. I don't know. It's okay. Through the process of metamorphosis. Profound change. Okay, there we go. There we go. It's a profound change. So through the process of metamorphosis, there's a profound cha change that takes place. And we've been reading about this. All right. That's good. That's a good enough explanation, right? Because it's not a parallel exactly. Yeah, about transformation also. Okay, good. Good. Thank you. Die. All right. So it's it's metaphysical it's the meta coming into the physical realm that's metaphysics metaphysics is beyond right but anyway all these words don't really whatever let's just keep moving <laughs> so the point here is that that how do we as a material condition being access the transcendental reality right so that's a metaphysical process Right? We have a material body, you know, you could dissect it and there's flesh and there's blood and there's veins and there's bile and other things that we won't talk about here. <laughs> right? Um, but that's the body. So how does that joy of love of God manifest in the body? When it comes, that's why I'm talking about when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, I went to Pada Padma Tirtha. And then he just broke down weeping. Because he had re he received this mantra, Gopal mantra, Krishna mantra from his guru, but then he saw the footprints of Krishna. This is how it's described. He went to Pada Padma the, the, the footprints of the Lord, Vishnu Krishna, right? He saw the footprints of the Lord, and he lost all composure and he just began to weep in the courtyard with his devotees, with his, his associates, and then hours and hours passed by. And he just began to call out, where is Krishna? Where is Krishna? Seeing those footprints, what next happens? Well, you know, he's not standing there anymore. So where did he go? Right? Kaha jao, kaha pao, brajendra nandan, brajendra nandan, vina fate moraman, kaha re kibo. Who I tell the story of my sorrow? I've lost the Lord of my life. He kept repeating this when he came home and he would grab onto people's shoulders and to their necks and say, where is Krishna? Have you seen Krishna or oh, my friend or oh, my brother? Have you seen Krishna? He received that mood in that lineage from his guru, in the mood of Shimati Radhika. That is where the source of the joy of pure love of God is, the fountainhead of that, Shimati Radhika. And so that mood, by her mercy, is present. And he came back to the devotees. And he began, so, so this is the summary leading up to his royal Abhishek. So he met there and then over the next few days, he was trying to describe this feeling and this experience and the mission of Sankirtan. And he began that Sankirtan movement, Kirtan, congregational chanting in the streets, in the homes, in Japa, especially the chanting of the name, because he's the incarnation of the name and he's the incarnation of divine love and he's the incarnation of supreme mercy. All right. Parama Karuna. The merc supremely merciful incarnation, Nam Avatar, the incarnation of the holy name, and Prem Avatar, the incarnation of divine love. So he began speaking about this with different devotees. Advaita Charya met him. There's many stories. We'll go back to this. Srivas Pandit and his house, they began doing Kirtan. So there's many personalities. He met with his students. He began teaching them. We'll go back to this also because it's very interesting. He told the students that every word in the, li in the alphabet and every book in the library is ultimately meant to lead you to God. He said that's the purpose of all literature. Every word in the alphabet, 
and every book in existence, its ultimate purpose is to lead you to God. And they said, how? I don't understand. And he said, I know. I don't even understand what I'm saying. <laughs> and he said, oh, I, I don't think I can be your teacher anymore. That's what he told them. Because he had all, all these boys that wanted to learn material science, material physics, material education. Everyone was interested in that. Sociology, biology, morphology, ontology, all these ologies, but no Krishna consciousness. So he said that actually those who are studying the scriptures and are devoid of awareness of the supreme entity are just uh, losing the plot, missing the point. So he said, this is the real aim and object of all sastra, of all scripture. So then he met with his guru, his, his previous guru of his previous ashram, right? Because now he's getting ready for sannyas. He had told them, teach the boys as you were before. Teach them grammar and so on. They will only accept you as their teacher. But he said, I don't think, he met with them one day, followed the instruction, right? He followed Gangadas Pandit. He had a guru in his childhood. So he followed his instruction. He taught the boys that day. But it was like, you know, he was saying, I, you know, he explained everything in that way about Krishna. He said, everything is just Krishna. Every word is just trying to bring you to Krishna. Everything is trying to bring you to God. So he said, I don't know how I can teach you because I can't change my mentality. This is my focus now. So then after that, you know, he went back home. He went back home and his mother brought his wife and sat her in front of him. And it said he was looking at her but she could tell he didn't see her. And then he would start chanting verses about Krishna, the beauty of Krishna as he enters the forest, the sweetness of Krishna, the mercy of Krishna, the glory of Krishna, his qualities, his different names. And then all of a sudden he would just start roaring. And his wife ran away afraid. I don't know what has happened to my husband. And his mother was very worried. His mother thought that he had gone mad. He had a sickness, a disease. And so she asked different doctors what to do. And they said, I don't know. No one could figure it out. His health was fine. He was very healthy. But that love of God, that joy of the love of God had entered his body. Right? He is transcendental Lord. But for devotees, this is the process of metamorphosis. We chant to become purified. We do our diksha. Diksha has two sides. One is sha. That diksha is two syllables. And sha means to remove all impurities so that the consciousness becomes completely pure, clean. So then in that reflection, in your heart, you can see your true self, self-realization. And then I'm not alone. The Supreme Spirit is also in my heart. And when my heart is pure, that's why it's cheto darpana marjanam. These are the first teachings Chaitanya gave when he said, this is the summary of all my teachings, Shikshastakam, is eight verses. The first words he says is, Cheto Dharpana Marjanam, cleanse the mirror of your heart. He didn't say cleanse the mirror of your soul. He didn't say Atma Dharpana Marjanam. Atma means the soul. Dharpana is the mirror and Marjanam is to clean. He said, Cheto Dharpana Marjanam, cleanse the mirror of your heart. And when the mirror of your heart is cleansed, you can see your spirit your spiritual form and the spiritual form of God. You see that in your heart. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, had, you know, with the mood of Srimati Radhika, was experiencing the beauty of the form of Krishna. Therefore, seeing his footprints even, the footprints of the Lord, he lost all composure. So now his life is, no one can understand what's going to happen next. He went and started meeting with people. He would go day by day, one day for this person, one day for that person, one day for this person. He went to Mukunda, who was a famous Kirtaniya. You know, some Kirtaniyas, you know, there's stories of Kirtaniyas. Those famous singers who, there was once a competition in a royal court about who is the best singer. And how they decided is they went into a forest and singing, all the deer and all the different animals came and they were just like trying to want to lay in his lap. They all surrounded him, just wanted to lay in his lap. Oh, such a good kirtaniya, right? And one of, so they did, did turns. One of the singers, they all came and he put uh, garlands on the, each neck of every deer, every animal, right? And then the next singer, 
He did it. And they also came back and he garlanded them. And even after he stopped, they just wanted to stay. Like there's different ways the story is told. But the point is the power of this. He said, he, you know, he took the garland off them, but like just simply starting to sing afterwards, they would just follow him around. Why? We can drink the nectar of the sweetness of this person's voice, right? Such is the power. So Mukundapu Murari, there's certain singers, you know, we sing uh, in our Gorarti. Sanjaya Mukunda Vasu Gosha Yadi Gai. Sanjaya Mukunda Vasu Gosh and so forth are singing for the Lord during his bathing ceremony. And in the morning we sing Lalita Vishaka Adi Sakigan. Lalita Vishaka and the other gopis are singing for Radha Krishna. So the power of their voice, the sweetness, we cannot imagine. So he went and met with Mukunda and talked about how they would, you know, spread love of God through Kirtan, right? That's why in this age, we do it through Kirtan. Harikata and then Kirtan. Why? Because if you only do the Kirtan, people don't understand. And then like we said in the previous class, you're getting all the benefit, but there's a hole and it's all flowing out. Harikata helps you build a container with which to hold the nectar of that love of God that flows into your heart. Otherwise, you can misuse it. So Harikata helps you hold it. But Kirtan is the main method. Kirtaniya Sarahari. And Harikata is a form of Kirtan. But you have to do Japa and Kirtan. That's the method to awaken love of God. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Sada, there's a verse he said to Raghunath Swami. Krishna Nam Sada Labhe. Always under the name Krishna. This is as he showed in his own life. So he began speaking and meeting with different devotees. He met with Advaita Acharya. Shortly after, you know, I'm just going to summarize then. Shortly after, he manifested the Sankirtan pastimes. He, then he began to experience the transformations of ecstasy. Because this power of that mantra, and he is Krishna himself, but then that mood of Radharani and her maidservants and her line is just overwhelming and like a flood of love and joy in his heart. He understood, right? There's an idea and there's an understanding and then there's a realization. So Krishna wanted to understand Shri Radhaya Pranaya Mahima Kidri Sovanayaiva. What is the glory of the love of Sri Radha? What is the glory of that love? What is that happiness she experiences? What is the joy of her love that she experiences in relation with me? So that's why we say, what is our mission? It's like, help people understand the glory of the joy of love of God. And who is the source of that? The ultimate source is Sri Radha, the joy of love of God. That is an endless waterfall of nectar. What does it lead to? Hair standing on end, choked voice, tears of ecstasy, rolling on the ground, wondering, losing all sense of external society and your worries and concerns. When Krishna played on the flute, the gopis left everything at a moment and ran to the forest to try to please Krishna, to serve Krishna, to satisfy that need of God. Where Bhagavat Srupananda, the bliss of his own self, does not satisfy him like the bliss of his relationship with his internal potency, Sri Radha. Swarup Shakti Ananda. That Ladini Shakti Sa, that essence of Swarup Shakti, that is what gives him bliss. And then all the jivas and their Swarup Ananda, when they are achieving that highest state in the Ras Lila in this world, mostly Sadhan Siddhas, perfected through practice. And then they took shelter of Sri Radha and together they met with Sri Krishna. And that relationship of bliss experiencing the, the mood of her love, the joy of her love, Radhaya Pranaya Mahima. He said that my, Krishna said this, that the gopis experience bliss greater than my own. The bliss of God, right? Sugar cannot taste itself. Honey cannot taste itself. So God is honey. God is sweetness. He is by nature blissful. Always blissful. Atma Ram Aptakam. Self-satisfied, but Radharani is his inner self. That's why it's called the internal energy. So Atma Ram Aptaka means he is self-satisfied because of Shrimati Radhika. 
He is self-complete because she is not separate from him. They are together. But still, they appear in two forms to enjoy their company and they appear again as one, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Mahaprabhu is in that position now where he's experiencing that ecstasy of love of God, the joy of love of Shrimati Radhika, and he is also Krishna. Right? So now it's transformations are happening in his body, his mind. So what happens? One day he manifests his Varaha form to Muradi Gupta. This is a very beautiful pastime. Then he meets with Lord Nityananda, Balaram. And then the whole chapter is dedicated to the glories of Lord Nityananda. And then the next chapter is how Lord Nityananda performs Vyas Puja. So this is the sequence of the pastimes. And then the Lord reveals himself in six arms. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Many people say now, oh, you know, I'm like the next Chaitanya. All right, so show me your six arms. Two arms holding a bow and arrow, Ram. Two arms holding a flute, Krishna. And two arms as a sannyasi with a danda. All right, all you so-called Lord Chaitanya reincarnated people, show me your six arms. And then manifest the form of Varahadev. <laughs> then the Lord met with Advaita Acharya. Then he met with Gadadhar and Pundarik. So he's meeting with all his core associates and discussing their pastimes and their plans. So then we come to this second part and we're going to talk about his royal Abhishek. All right. So this is the sequence from when he returned home after receiving mantra. All right. So the first chapter of the second part of Madhya Kanda, the middle pastimes. The eighth chapter talks about the manifestation of all his opulences. Ultimately, he is God. That's the point. He's not just a devotee. He is Bhagavan. He is the Supreme Lord. He's the, he's the same as Krishna, but he's appeared in this form in this pastime. So he is Krishna. So he's manifesting his opulences. And then, which we're going to read about now because we're going to celebrate his Abhishek. For 21 hours, he, he exhibited transcendental ecstasy. So we're going to read about that. Okay. All right, prelude complete. All right. <clears throat> Gauranidhi Kapata Sanyasi Veshadhari Akila Bhuvana Adhikari. All right, the first verse is affirming what I was just saying. All glories to Gore, the Lord of the entire universe, who disguised himself by wearing the dress of a sannyasi. <laughs> Jaya Jagannath Sachinandana Chaitanya Jaya Gora Sundarir Sankirtana Dhanya. All glories to Sri Chaitanya, the son of Jagannath, his father, and Sachimata, his mother. All glories to Gora Sundar, who inaugurated the glorious Sankirtan movement. That Sankirtan movement is now beginning, the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya. Jaya Nityananda Garal Harir Jivan Jaya Jaya Dvaita Srivasa Pranadhan All glories to the Lord who is the life of Nityananda and Gadadhar All glories to the life and wealth of Advaita and Srivas Jaya Shri Jagadananda Haridasa Pran Jaya Vakreshwara Pundarika Premadhan So now he's, you know, God is not alone, he's with his family So now the author is mentioning the names of his associates All glories to Jagadananda very sweet associate. We'll learn about him later. You want to develop relationship with all these personalities. They're your friends. They're your family. So who is Jagarananda? Who is Haridas? Who is Vakreshwar? Who is Pundarik? Jaya Vasudeva, Shri Gharbira Prananath, Jiva Pratikara Prabhu, Subhadrishtipat. All glories to the dear Lord of Vasudeva and Shri Gharba. O Lord, please glance mercifully on the living entities. All glories to Gauranga along with his devotees. By hearing topics about Lord Chaitanya, one obtains pure bhakti. O brothers, please hear attentively the topics of this middle section, Madhya Kanda regarding how Gauda Chandra Mahaprabhu enjoyed his pastimes. Okay, so now we'll begin this description. So they started doing kirtan all night long. So he went and met with Mukunda, this famous kirtaniya who was very qualified. And he said, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna do kirtan all night, <laughs> all night long. How long? All night long. They didn't even have to plan it. They just said, you know, they didn't like plan it. Let's do all night kirtan. They said, oh, let's start kirtan this evening. 
right? That's how it was, you know, okay, they met with the Dwaita Chari. Dwaita Chari went to Shantipur for some time. They met with, you know, Vasudev, Pundarik, they went, met with Jagannath Pan, Jagannath Pandit, the different devotees, Gadara Pandit, the core group of those who are really devotees of Krishna. No mixed desires. For one year straight, they did kirtan in the home all night long. They said, you know what, tonight let's start kirtan. You know, like, okay, six, seven o'clock at night, let's come together and do kirtan. Sound good? Let's do kirtan together. And then it just went all night long. Morning time, they went and bathed in the Ganga. And they came home, took some breakfast. First, they came home, worshipped the deities, right? This singing and dancing isn't recreation. It's a great festival, but it's for the pleasure of God. Always remember and have that mood. My purpose is not just to enjoy myself. The joy of love of God is the joy of service and reciprocation of love. That is me as a, myself as a spirit in connection with the Supreme Spirit. So that joy of love of God is in service. So all night long, they're thinking, why should I stop serving God by kirtan? All night long, morning time, they went and bathed in the Ganga, came home, worshiped their deities, had some breakfast, took a little nap, bona fide, right? Naps are bona fide. People debate with me, are naps bona fide? I say, yes. Our Gurudev would say, I don't care when you sleep, how much you sleep. When you're awake, try to serve God. Maintain your body as you need to. Some people sleep more at night, some people, but they would come home and they're all, all night doing kirtan. So they take a little nap, 15, 20 minutes, half an hour. And then they would do all the different daily activities, meeting with people. It depends on, you know, everyone has their trade, right? Everyone has their duties, everyone has their obligations. But every evening they would come back together and think, what should we do today? Let's do kirtan. And then they would start kirtan and it would just go and go and go and go and go. And then all of a sudden it would just be morning again. And then it would repeat. So this happened day after day after day. One day, while dancing in kirtan, Sometimes they do it in the daytime also. The Lord made all the devotees fortunate by going up and sitting on the throne of Lord Vishnu. <laughs> all right. So this is a very important thing to remember. God is God and conditioned souls are conditioned souls. Even liberated souls are not God. So this is Lord Chaitanya is Krishna. That's why I told people, okay, oh, but people say like, well, I am, you know, Lord Chaitanya, he did it. I can do it. There's people out there that say, oh, you can worship my feet with Tulsi leaves. It's a great, great offense. Great offense. I am Guru. I am Krishna. Yes. Tell that to the soldiers of Yamaraj. Right? That is your destination. I am Guru and Guru is Krishna and I am Krishna and worship me. If you are Guru and you are Krishna, then everyone is Guru. Everyone is Krishna. Worship everyone. Why are you so special? People say, you know, I am soul and soul is God and worship me. Okay, well, every soul is God, then worship everyone. And Krishna himself is example. He's always serving everyone else. The cows, the coward boys, he's serving the people who come to uh, Yudhisthira Maharaj's assembly. So anyhow, the point is, God is God and we are not. Done. All right? Everyone agrees? We have a quorum here? Anyone else doesn't agree, it's not my problem. But we can all agree that we are not God. Can we say it? We are not God. We are not God. All right. So now they're all dancing and he's, he's in the incarnation of a devotee. So he is Krishna, but he's performing the Leela of a devotee. That's why the first verse of this chapter said, Oh, that tricky Lord who put on the outfit of a sannyasi, but who's really Krishna. There's a verse, another verse that says, who is more, you know, tricky than Lord Chaitanya as Krishna, he's dancing with hundreds of millions of gopis. Satakoti Gopi, but now he's saying he's a sannyasi. <laughs> right? He's always Krishna. How tricky is Lord Chaitanya? So this is important to remember. He is Krishna. There is no difference. It's just his Leela. It's his play. So he went up in the kirtan. Everyone's dancing and dancing and dancing. And then he, you know, in a temple for any kirtan, you know, you have you have to have your Ishvara, your altar. So there's a throne for Lord Vishnu. And he went and sat on the throne. <laughs> On other days, when the Lord had manifested his ecstasy, 
So sometimes, okay, this is describing the full, full purport here. Sometimes he had gone and sat on the throne of Vishnu, but it was like he wasn't aware of what he was doing. It's just like, oh, he's just ecstatic. And so there's like this, you know, a debate amongst the devotees. He's a great devotee. It's actually after he came home, everyone started discussing what had happened. Is he, a, has Krishna incarnated in him? Has he realized love of God? Is he some miracle happening or has he gone mad? Everyone's discussing what has happened. So try to put yourself in the shoes of the townspeople of Navadweep. What has happened? So sometimes now with his intimate circle of devotees, he would go and just casually kind of like not in full awareness, sit on the throne of Vishnu. But now during his shot, Prahariya Bhav, the Lord gave up all pretension and revealed his glories as the Lord for 21 hours continuously. So today he wasn't just like going and sitting for a minute and then going and doing kirtan. You know, you're like dancing and dancing, you sit down and you keep dancing. You just walked up and sat down on the throne of Vishnu. All the devotees felt great ecstasy as they stood before the Lord with folded hands. So we do our Gorarti. Jayo, Jayo Gora Chandre, Aroti Keshoba, Janavi Tata Bame, Jagamana Lobha. They recognized him as the Supreme Lord. Different devotees understood this in their heart, but now they recognized him as the Lord incarnate, as the embodiment of divine love and the giver of the holy name, the method to awaken your love of God. And he's sitting there and they felt ecstasy flood in their heart. They were waiting. When will he reveal himself? Do not hide, Lord. Do not hide. Most of the time he's hiding. Lord Chaitanya doesn't like it. Sometimes you try to worship him as Krishna. Oh, I don't like it. I am in the mood of Radharani. I'm in the mood of the devotee. But also it's important to understand the principle and the tattva. He is Bhagavan. He is the Supreme Lord. So all the devotees felt great ecstasy. Ki ad bhuta shanto shesh hoile prakash shabai bhashena jena by kunta vilas. How wonderful were their feelings of satisfaction. Everyone felt like they were enjoying in the spiritual planet. They had been transported to the spiritual planet. Metamorphosis complete. The Lord sat like the Lord of Vaikuntha. Not even a tinge of illusion was present there. So he made that courtyard and that abode the spiritual world. That is the power of God. That is the metamorphosis. All right. We read about this the other day. How is it that that transcendental name, the transcendental love appears in this material body? It says it cannot. But there's a transformation that begins through diksha, through the maha mantra, through the mercy, through association, a transformation begins. And it said those who, this is directly quoting from Mishra Chakravarti Thakur, said only by surrender to the messenger of Krishna, the teacher and the lineage, then that transformation becomes possible through sound. Because the sound is the subtlest of elements and the transcendental sound can enter into this world through even though it's a material situation, the sound, Om, as you become purified, the pure name of Krishna manifests on the tongue of the pure devotee. That means pure means that consciousness has become clear. They've seen themselves, they have seen God, and they have realized their relationship of love. Then the transcendental name manifests. Otherwise, Atashi Krishna Namadi. This is a philosophical discussion, but that transcendental energy starts to manifest. And in its full manifestation, the material body is unnecessary. And so you achieve your spiritual form from within. It's no longer necessary. Caterpillar becomes butterfly. Okay. So Jai, no Maya was there. The Lord removed Maya completely. No more Maya for this 21 hours, no Maya. The Lord ordered. I woke up this morning, I thought, let's do the Abhishek pastime of Mahaprabhu because we're going to be doing this tonight. Understand what you are doing. There is a need for Aishwarya also. Who is God? Who am I? 
then you can ultimately cross beyond that into sweetness. You can wrestle with Krishna, you can argue, you can fight, you can quarrel in love. When your whole body is made of that love, when there's nothing but love, when every particle of your being is that spiritual energy, ananda, your body, the bodies of the associates of Krishna are only ananda. Sandini, their existence is there, but really everything is by the power of that ananda. So, but in this stage for us, you need God in your life. You need to worship God. Therefore, the Lord said, Agya hoilo bolomod abhisheka gita, recite the prayers for my royal abhishek, my royal bathing. We'll sing those. We have a whole series of prayers that we'll sing tonight, this evening. There's a whole scriptural set of prayers to sing when you do the bathing ceremony. Hearing the Abhishek prayers, the Lord rolled his head. <laughs> right? Without duplicity, he glanced mercifully at everyone. <laughs> what does it mean without duplicity? He's hiding and pretending to be a devotee. I'm just a devotee. Right? Jai Prabhu Haribo. All right, so here the author is saying now without duplicity, he glanced mercifully upon everyone as God looking at every soul, right? The devotees understood the Lord's indication and decided to perform the Abhishek ceremony. So how do we do Abhishek? All the devotees brought water from Mother Ganga and they strained it with fine, clean cloth. No unnecessary particles, no leaves, and so forth. Clean, pure, purify your consciousness. Strain your consciousness. This is an analytical process. Sankhya Yoga should analyze your thoughts and think what are necessary thoughts, what are unnecessary thoughts. I am not my thoughts, so I don't have to be, you know, they don't have to be my life partners, right? This thought, nah, no need. This one, no need. This one, no need. I'm just going to keep Krishna conscious thoughts, happy thoughts, loving thoughts, service thoughts, scripture, my relationship, my soul, nitya cheese. <laughs> Eternal things, that's what it means. <laughs> All right, dear. Someone <laughs> makes Tirtha happy. Cheese in Hindi means things. <laughs> so, <laughs> nitya cheese. The eternal substance, that's what it means. That's why cheese is a very powerful thing, even in English, right? The essence, the substance, right? Nitya cheese means I will choose that my consciousness and my thoughts will only reflect on transcendental subjects. You strain the water of the Ganga. Ganga is transcendental. Consciousness is transcendental, but it becomes polluted by material association and material desires. But that's, that's how transformation is possible. How is the metamorphosis possible? Because the consciousness is transcendental. Atma is divine, particle of God, part and parcel of the absolute truth. So the metamorphosis just means when the caterpillar becomes a butterfly, I, I'm just making this up, I don't actually know. But I would assume that everything unnecessary for the butterfly is left behind, right? I'll give you an example that I'm also making up, all right? <laughs> when a rocket ship goes into outer space, it then leaves behind that fuel compartment, right? And then it goes on. It's unnecessary baggage at that point. So this body, material body, blood, flesh, stool, bone, it's so no longer necessary when that metamorphosis is complete, but that spirit, which is divine, which is transcendental, Blossoms fully. That is metamorphosis. So you strain, the, well, the process of purification, learn to strain the water. Why is it Ganga? I'm giving this analogy now because the Ganga is described to be transcendental. But bubbles, foam, mud, how is that possible? And it's coming in touch with the material life, material reality, material matter itself. So they strain the water. You know, a daily journal. What did I spend 24 hours thinking about? This is my sadhana. 
oh, I thought about this person's problem and then this person's problem and then this person's problem and this person. And then I turned a few more pages and I said, problem, 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 problem. I went down the list of problems. Oh, Krishna. Okay, I thought about Krishna there. Okay, Krishna there. This is my journal. How many times were you able to think about Krishna? How many times were you thinking about material situation, material problems, material this, material that? Some is necessary. We have to still live in this world, right? We have our system for that, problem-solving mechanisms. But you know what we should do? With every problem we solve, we should add Krishna. Transcendentalize it, okay? So they strain the water, the fine, clean cloth. Then they prepared it very joyfully. What did they mix? Camphor and four other ingredients, all right? Two portions of musk, four portions of sandalwood, three portions of kumkum, and one portion of camphor. All right, so who's taking notes for tonight? All right, whenever you do Abhishek now. Two portions of musk, you know, this is the recipe. When God appears and he says, bathe me, <laughs> this is your recipe. You take clean, holy water, which is clean and purified. If you don't have Ganga water, you have a mantra to invoke Ganga. So you create water and you don't use your nails. They're not so clean. You can touch it with the, you know, finger pad. And say, Om. We take our Brahman thread. Om. Or no Brahman thread, no problem. Om. With a prayer. Om. Gange cha jamune chaiva godavari saraswati narmada sindhu kavari jalismin sanidim kuru. Oh dear Mother Ganga. Mother Jamuna, Mother Saraswati, Mother Narmada, all the seven holy rivers, sisters, please appear in this water so that I can worship the Lord. If you pray to them, please appear in this water so that I can worship the Lord, they will come. Oh, dear seven holy rivers, pure, pure, please appear in this water so I can do something dirty with you. They will not come. Why would they come? They're the servants of God. So, Om Gange Cha Yamune Chaiva Godavari Saraswati Narmada Sindhu Kaviri Jalismin Sindhu Kaviri Oh, Ganga Devi, Oh, Jamuna Devi, Oh, Narmada Devi, Saraswati Devi, please appear in this water. So they, that's how we do Abhishek. If you don't do that, it's not proper Abhishek. And spiritual life has different ingredients. It's called Bhakti Rasa. Bhakti Rasa. It's not just water. There's other ingredients. Vibhav, Anubhav, Sattvic, Vyabhichari. Very detailed topic many different emotions, many different moods of love and service. All right, this is a very deep, detailed topic you'll learn about, no problem. All right, so they mixed the ingredients. What were the ingredients? How many portions? Two. How many portions of the next, what was next? You don't have to describe it in order, but there's four ingredients. First one, musk, two portions. What is musk? That's a long topic, but basically, I don't know if we don't have time to get this topic. Let's keep going. <laughs> That's like a sidetrack. It's a very sweet topic. What is musk? We'll talk about it another time. Four portions of sandalwood. And that we have to do a harikata just for what is musk, what is sandalwood, what is kumkum, and what is camphor. That's a separate class. Two portions of musk, four portions of sandalwood. Sandalwood paste. This is the incarnation of... It's a long topic. Three portions of kumkum. Okay. And one portion, I don't know why it's in this order. Let's do it one to four, okay? One portion of camphor, two portions of musk, three portions of kumkum, four portions of sandalwood. All right? C-M-S-K. One portion of camphor, two portions musk, three portions kumkum, four portions sandalwood. Okay, so tonight, even if we had a small amount, a little bit of this, a little bit more of this, a little bit more of this, a little bit more of this. All right, then the tumultuous sound of Jai, Jai was heard in the four directions as everyone began to recite the Abhishek mantras. Abhishek means it's a special form of bath. It's a bathing ceremony for God or for a special personality, for a deity. They did this to Radharani in Vrindavan when they crowned her Empress of Vrindavan. So when she was crowned Empress and she received the name Vrindavan Ishwari, that means the Empress of Vrindavan, all the demigods, and all the residents of Vrindavan came, even Krishna came and performed her Abhishek. So Abhishek isn't just like, oh, I got up in the morning, I took a bath. That's not Abhishek. This is Abhishek, as we're gonna hear. Jai, Jai. 
You want to hear the verse? It says, Maha Jai. All right? So everyone knows Jai. Jai means victory. And Jai is like a Jai. Hallelujah. Jai. But then there's Maha Jai. Jai. Okay? Maha Jai. Jai. Dwani Shuni Chari Bite. Abhishek Mantra Shab Lagali. Lag, lagila Podite. The tumultuous sound of Jai, Jai was heard in the four directions as everyone began to recite the Abhishek mantras. Ramachandra is doing lunch. Come, come and offer, right? I think so. Do you see him? You know it. Okay, we'll do 15 more minutes and I'll go check. That's okay. Let's wait till 12.30. Sarabhadde Shri Nityananda Jaya Jaya Bholi Prabhura Shri Sire Jaladile Kutuhali Lord Nityananda chanted, Jai, Jai. So first Lord Nityananda went. Every part of this is very, very important, right? There's, they give the Abhishek mantras here also, okay? That's special Purusha Shukta prayers that the Vedas, they're in the Vedas directly and they're prayers to worship Lord Vishnu, God, all right? So who went first? Lord Nityananda. Lord Nityananda is Krishna's brother, Balaram, but he is the servitor Godhead. Ashraya Bhagavan. It's called Ashraya Jatiya Bhagavan, the servitor Godhead. Otherwise, not different from Krishna, but he's Krishna manifested in his second form, Balaram. All right? So that Balaram appears in this incarnation as Lord Nityananda. You're learning a lot of these things for the first time. It must be very interesting. It's like, right? Very interesting. It's very nice for me to be able to describe it. You know, and first time I'm hearing it, it's like, whoosh, right? Well, I can't imagine. It's like, Okay, Jai, oh, Jai, Vrindavan, Tantra, Jai, Haribo. Okay, great. So, we're very blissfully absorbed. And I remember on Gaur Pranima, Gurudev would have uh, Chaitanya Bhagavat going all day, right? So, you know, we're going to cook many preparations for Takaji after. We're going to make many preparations. You know, I'll tell you, you want to make 64 items really quick? Roast semolina and, and ghee, a lot of it. And then have like four or five sauces ready and just mix it in one, mix it with them, mix it in them. Five halavas, done. All right? Make your cookie batter and then have this and that and this and that and 10 kinds of cookies, done. Sabji, get ghee frying and fry everything. <laughs> right? Fry paneer, fried parmal, fry jackfruit, fry potatoes, fry eggplant, fry cauliflower, fry, every, fry everything and separate it all. And then with this one, you use these spices. With this one, you use this cream. With that one, you use this. With this one, bus. Two hours, 64 items finished. No problem. I'm telling you. Experience. All right? Rice. Yeah, you make one big rice. We're going to do this. You know, cashew this one, pistachio this one, almond this one, saffron this one with raisin and coconut. You know, this one with brown sugar, this one with this honey, you know, this unlimited varieties. So first, Lord Nitya chanted, Jai, Jai, as he happily poured water on the head of the Lord. Krishna's first incarnation, Balaram, his brother, servitor God, had showed that who is most worshipable? That is the supreme God, Ishwara Parama Krishna. Right? In an assembly of worshipable persons, you should worship the most worshipable person. Everyone, you worship Guru, worship the devotees, worship Tulsi, but who is most worshipable? Balaram teaches us, Nityananda says, worship Krishna. Ishvara, Parama Krishna. You know how there's an evidence about this? One time, I'll quickly tell this story, because I know we have to keep going. I'll quickly tell this story, because we have to cook today, and then we have to do another class today. You know, we have to keep going all day. Right? This is how we pass our time. Fast days means feast days. Fasting means feasting on Krishna's glories, his name. Only transcendental, subtle things. All right? So there's a story, Krishna is with Arjuna and in Dwarka, Krishna's own kingdom where nothing bad is supposed to happen. There was a Brahmin who his wife would get pregnant and then right as her child was born, it would die again and again and again. And the Brahmin came and complained to Krishna and said, your kingdom is supposed to be pure and in a, if there's a righteous king, no child should die immaturely, prematurely. You know, people fighting each other, killing each other, this and that, but there should be so, no unnatural death and no great, no, you know, how do you know America is sick? Turn on the news. That's how you know, right? It's fault up and down all along the line. You know, it's not the leaders, it's the politic. The body politic is at fault. 
the culture is gone off the tracks, you know, and it's still going 250 miles an hour because that's the American spirit. So we're going 250 miles per hour off the tracks, going where we, nobody knows. And we're playing this whole myth, you know, don't get into the deep dive of it, right? Money and all these things, it's all a big game, right? And we are not winning. All right, so that's enough of politics. But, right, somebody is winning. That's how games work. All right, it's the people with all the power. And it's not who you think. <laughs> you don't know. Right? It's not the figureheads, it's not the puppets. All right, so that's enough of politics. Okay, keep going. Jai. So, the point is, the Brahmin, thank you, Vrindavan. <laughs> Good, Chai. Okay, so the Brahmin, he told Krishna this is not possible. Why, is, why are these children dying? And he said, you know what, this is bad. I'm going to, he said, I'm gonna kill myself or something if it keeps happening. Something like that. I don't remember the exact details, but what happened is Arjuna heard about this and he was very angry. He thought, I will defend the honor of Krishna. And if I can't stop it from happening next time, I will kill myself, I'll enter into fire. And so the wife became pregnant again, and she was going into labor. She was going to have her child, and Arjuna was standing vigil. He said, I will stand guard at your door so that death cannot enter. Arjuna proclaimed like that. And the mother gave birth. The child died. Arjuna became very grave. And he made a big stacked wood for like the next two, three hours. He didn't tell anybody, he didn't go home, didn't tell his brothers, but everybody knew. But how are you gonna stop Arjuna? Arjuna is the most powerful warrior in the world. The son of Indra, king of heaven. So he's making his funeral pile, pyre to offer himself to it at sunset. And Krishna came and he sat down and Arjuna's putting one stick on. One stick on. Krishna said, my friend, please speak with me. He's putting another stick on. He said, I'll talk with you while I make the fire. <laughs> right? He's stacking the wood. Krishna said, why do you do this stuff? Why do you do this? Right? Beware of pride. Right? Even the pride of your, I will do or die. You will do or die? You are the doer now? Therefore, Gurudev said, try or die. <laughs> right? It's more humble. It's accepting that I am limited, that God is great. Try or die. Try. We have the capacity to try. But he told Arjuna, look what you've, look what you've done now. Now you're going to kill yourself? He said, you can say I'll do or die, but I don't want you to die. He took this do or die commitment. I will kill myself because I didn't fulfill my vow. He said, you asked me permission to do or die? Nonsense, rascal. No, he was his friend, but, right? The guru can say like that. Sanatana Goswami was ready to give up his life. Marva said, this is your body? You have sores, you have sickness, I don't care. You're, you offer yourself to me, you offer yourself to God. How, what right do you have to give up your life? Nonsense, rascal. Murari Gupta, he had a knife under his pillow to kill himself one night. This is another story in Chaitanya Bhagavad. He wanted to kill himself because he said, I love Ram. And Mahaprabhu is talking about Krishna, 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 but I love Ram, what am I supposed to do? And the Lord appeared in his home and said, oh, dear friend, it was morning time. He was thought, today I'm gonna to kill myself. The Lord appeared, knock, knock. Oh, Lord, you come. I cannot follow your desire, what can I do? And he was crying and crying. The Lord said, you know, will you do me a favor, please? And he said, how can I not accept your request? Right, oh, how can I not satisfy? What, what? Okay, he was thinking if it's the last thing I do, it's fulfilling the desire of the Lord. And he said, please give me the knife under your pillow. That's what he said. And he said, never hurt yourself. Right? And he said, and then he appeared to him as Ram. And Murari Gupta is the incarnation of Hanuman. And so he appeared as Ram and he climbed on the shoulders of Murari Gupta and they started running around the courtyard. <laughs> this is not my story, this is the story. Okay? So. Krishna told Arjuna, why have you done this vow? It's not good. Why have you done this vow? But anyhow, you've done it. I know you cannot go back on your words. So they're making the funeral pile, pyre. 
And Krishna said, okay, I will find this child that was that disappeared. All right? Before nighttime. So I don't break your vow. And so Krishna and Arjuna, it's a great, this, is, this would be like a great, uh, you know, for our, uh, any of our media people, you know? Imagine making this, this amazing story. Krishna and Arjuna go on an intergalactic journey. And they go beyond this world. They go on their chariot and Krishna by his divine energy says, I will find this boy. Right? I will fight with fate and reveal this boy and find him. And what happened? And I'll bring him back. So they go on the mystical chariot and they go to hell. He's not there. Of course. They go to all the different subtle regions. He is not there. They go to all the different planetary systems. He's not anywhere. By the power of God, his infinite power, they go and they travel and they visit and they cannot find the boy. So then the Lord says, there's one place we haven't looked. There's one place we haven't looked yet. Beyond the material universes, beyond the subtle region, beyond the, the void, there's the transcendental Lord. And there's different layers of that Godhead, but there's the Lord who is resting on the causal ocean with millions of universes coming out of his pores. There's that God, the expansion of Krishna, right? Mahakal, Puran, beyond the void. It said there's, a, there's all the material universes, and then there's like a, a void of space. And then beyond that, Supreme Lord, resting on the causal ocean in Yoga Nidra, Cosmic, cosmic lila. That means absorption. And with every breath, oh, everything in the material is manifesting. With every inhalation, everything material is re-entering his form. So Krishna said, we haven't gone there yet. <laughs> All right, so Krishna and Arjuna go on their chariot and they go close to this causal form of the Lord. He opens his eyes. And Krishna is smiling and Maha, 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 Maha Vishnu is smiling at each other. And Krishna says, do you have those babies? <laughs> <laughs> what happened to the sons of the Brahmana? And he said, oh Lord, I, they're safe, don't worry. But I brought them to me because I wanted to see the beauty of your face. That's what he said. I want to see the beauty of your face, face to face, not in my heart. Vishnu, Krishna's incarnation, in that form said, I want to see the beauty of your face, Krishna. There's a verse in Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna saw the universal form of the Lord and he was afraid. And they said, Lord, I want to see your original form. And it said there in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna appeared in his original form. Very sweet, very charming, very beautiful, right? So Lord Vishnu said, I want to see your form, Krishna. And then he gave back the boys. And then Krishna Arjuna brought them back and gave them to the Brahmin. So you see, the point here is, why are they bathing Lord Chaitanya? Worship the most worshipable. Okay? Ishwara Parama Krishna Satchidananda Vigraha Anadi Adi Govinda Sarva Karana Karanam. He is the cause of even that Mahavishnu from whom all the universes are manifesting. Sarva Karana Karanam, the cause of all causes. Okay? So now... Lord Nityananda comes and bathes Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Jai, Jai, as he happily poured water on the head of the Lord. What was everyone chanting? Om Sahasra Sirsa Purusha Sahasraksha Sahasra Patsa Bhumam Vishwato Vritvatva Tishtad Tasangulam Om Purusha Evedham Sarvam Yadbhutam Yascha Bhavyam Uta Mritat Vash Yashena Yad Anena Tiro Hati and so on and so forth for many, many verses. Om Yagena Yagya Maya Janta Devastani Dharmani Pradamanya Ashan Te Hanaka Mahimana Chachante Yatra Purve Sadhya Shanti Devaha. There's dozens and dozens of verses. These are verses that you use to worship God, declaring his transcendental nature. So everyone's chanting these verses now. All the devotees, courtyard is filled with everyone chanting, Sahasra, Sirsa, Purusha. That means, the first translation, right? It means that a supreme, omnipresent Lord. 
Arivo Jai Jai. Our uh, running, running assistant in the kitchen is always hearing Hari Kata while cooking. Very nice, Jai. Okay, good. So we that's good. We have 15, 20 minutes to keep meditating on this Abhishek pastime. All right, so they're singing. All right, that's why I do it, the story slow so you can try to remember afterwards, okay? Afterwards, chant and try to remember some of the details of the story, okay? Radharamanjuki Jai. The devotees of Goranga were expert in chanting mantras. As they recited mantras, they joyfully poured water on the Lord. So one by one, they're bringing golden water pots and bathing Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he's smiling there without duplicity. No longer pretending to be a devotee, <laughs> just God himself. Devotees headed by Mukunda saying auspicious songs for Abhishek. Other devotees cried. Some danced. Some became so overwhelmed in ecstasy they could neither cry or dance. <laughs> the chaste women made auspicious sounds as everyone's hearts filled with ecstasy. but times a thousand. The Lord of Vaikuntha sat on the throne as all the devotees poured water on his head. As a formality, there was supposed to be 108 pots of water. All right, that's how you do Abhishek, 108 pots, okay? But today, thousands of pots of water could not hold all with which they bathed the Lord. All formality went out the window. Mahaprabhu, the supreme jewel, the connoisseur of all rasas, incarnated in that form of pure divine love, the pure holy name, has appeared and he's accepted his, shown himself in his position. And so 108 pots, ah, let's just use 1,008. Who knows, 10,008, right? The fortunate demigods then assumed human forms, all right? So now all the devotees are bathing and the demigods come and wait in line. Right? All the devotees are bathing Mahaprabhu. Not just one time. They're getting back in line. Right? They bathe Mahaprabhu and then get back in line. I remember as a child, as a kid, Gurudev would give his classes then pass out sweets. Give out cookies. Or ladus or sweet balls. We'd have our badger festivals. And during the festival, like Vrindavan Chandra, someone's always in the kitchen. But in badger, it's very nice because the kitchen is right next to the pavilion. And for us, the kitchen is right next to the Kata Hall because of the miracle of the internet. But we would cook sweets for Gurudev and he would pass them out. And I was a little kid, so many of us little kids, we'd go and take a cookie and then get back in line. <laughs> right? And Gurudev, Gurudev was so sweet about it. He would, he would like offer you one and then he would eat it. He would take a cookie and break it into four pieces and he would say, here, and he would... And then he would give you one. If you come again, he would say, hey, you already took. Then he would give again. And sometimes Madhav Maharaj would say, hey, you took three times. Let somebody else take. But Gurudev especially favored the children. So the demigods assumed human forms. Indra, Varuna, Vayu, and so on and so forth. Brahma, Shiva, they all assumed human forms and took part in the Abhishek ceremony. If one offers even a drop of water at the lotus feet of the Lord in meditation. What to speak of directly? He is never subjected to the punishment of the God of death. That Lord was now directly accepting water from everyone, even the demigods, right? So if you offer one drop of water the Lord's lotus feet in your mind, you'll never have to see the God of death. That means upon giving up this mortal coil, that metamorphosis transformation will be complete. You can achieve this eternal abode. This is the benediction. Shri Vasiradha Sadasi Gane Anejal Prabhu Shnana Kore Bhakta Sivar Efal. All the different servants in the household, the Sevaks, Male and female, both, they all brought water and also bathed the Lord. This is the result of serving the devotees. So who is more fortunate? The devotees who are serving Krishna or the devotees who are serving the devotees? 
Bhakata Seva Paramasiddhi Premalati Karamula. So the purpose of every festival we do this ashram is to serve devotees. Anyone comes from anywhere, oh, we get a chance to serve you? Happy day. We won the spiritual lottery. This is how it is. One most fortunate servant named Duki brought water for the Lord. And he encouraged her saying, bring, bring. Right? Some people is just lot in life is not so good, you know? Some people have a bad lot in life. That's karma. So we see, you know, if you get, it's, this is how material snakes and ladders works, right? You do the wrong thing. You're almost at the top and then you go back down. Then you have to suffer and deprivation and poverty. And oh, the people who got all the money and the people are happy. They're the happy people. So this person's name was Dookie, which means misery. <laughs> Their name means, what's your name? It sounds like a sweet girl's name, you know? Oh, misery. Right? Misery. You know? Oh, misery. <laughs> Mabra said, I don't like this name. Seeing her love, you know, who are the parents who gave her that name, first of all? <laughs> right? <laughs> all right. Anyhow, Mahabra said, no. From Duki, she will be called Suki. Suki means joyful. Duki means one who is unhappy. Suki means one who is happy. <laughs> That's the, it's a, there's a footnote, right? So misery to joy. Nana Veda Mantra Pari Sarva Bhaktagan Snana Kuraya Anga Kurilo Marajan. All the devotees bathed the Lord while chanting various Vedic mantras. And then they dried his transcendental body. We're lucky. Pujaris are lucky you get to do this every day. And in our minds, we can do this. In your mind, you offer one drop of water to the Lord. You will not have to see the Lord of death. All the devotees bathed the Lord. Thereafter, they dressed him in new cloth and applied fragrant sandal paste on his transcendental body. All right, this is how Abhishek works, okay? You bathe the Lord. After bathing, dry the Lord. I tell people, don't use old, rough cloth. You know, even people, we like soft towels. Right? Once a towel gets too old, it's time to be retired. Put it out to pasture. <laughs> right? I've, I've done that recently. Oh, these four or five, retirement. Right? No longer soft. So they use nice, soft cloth, dried the Lord's body, and then he dressed him, was dressed. This is Lord Chaitanya who we worship. We don't worship sannyasi, Lord Chaitanya. We worship Goranga before sannyas Leela. He is the Lord, but we also, there's a whole science behind it. We won't get into now. They cleaned the Lord's throne, Vishnu's throne, because, you know, as also when we, we get carried away when we're bathing, you know, we bring honey, not carried away. This is also the rule, but sometimes people bring Martinelli's, you know, <laughs> They bring pomegranate juice, cherry juice, so many varieties of smoothies. I've been to Abhishek where we have like 10 kinds of smoothies, right? Oh, give him some of the banana strawberry. Give him some of the pineapple mango. Give him some of the pina colada smoothie, right? Give him some of the berry blend. You know, we should actually do that. Go to Walmart and buy all the, what's that? What, Naked Juice Company, right? Just get one of all of them. It's a good idea. It's an easy way to make 64 types of Abhishek. Get all the kinds of juice. And we bathe the Lord. So the point is with ghee, with yogurt, with you know, honey, with sugar. So that afterwards they have to clean the area. We do Abhishek. It was just done a little while ago in Radha Kunj. Panchatattva, Radha Krishna, five big Panchatattva deities, then Radha Krishna, Lita Vishaka, Gurudev, Prabhupada. We, we've done Abhishek on Snan Yatra, which is when Lord Jagannath is bathed. We've done this. We bathe Radha Krishna, Lalita Vishaka, big forms. Then Gurudev, Prabhupada, uh, Gurudev, Bhakti Vanda Vahamika Swamimars, Bhakti Siddhanta Prabhupada, Bhakti Prigan Keshu Goswami Mars, Bhakti Vanda Swami Prabhupada, then Jagannath, Balayi Subhadra, then all the Shalagrams, then Panchatattva, all in one room. And the whole room, like every corner of that room has butter, ghee, honey, yogurt. And when you're bathing, it goes on the walls, goes on the roof. So then afterwards you have to clean, right? So they clean the area very nicely. Then the Lord sat down again on the throne, right? 
So when we do Abhishek, after the Lord is clean, that means after the place is clean, after he's dressed, then he sits on the Singhasan. Then what happened? Lord Nityananda sat, stood on his right side and he held an umbrella over the Lord. Beautiful umbrella, decorative umbrella. Then another fortunate devotee was fanning the Lord with a chamara. Mother Chandrika is like, I want to sign up for that. <laughs> then all the devotees began to offer various items of worship at the lotus feet of the Lord. They offered water for washing the feet, auspicious ingredients for the hands, water for washing the mouth, sandalwood paste, flowers, incense, lamps, foodstuffs, and cloth, the best of whatever you can get in this world. That's the mood, right? The best of whatever comes from this world will offer to the Lord. According to their capacity, they offered Brahmin thread, cloth, ornaments. In this way, they worship the Lord with 16 ingredients. This is our process of archan. You do it by the mind. And if you're fortunate, you can do it by the mind and the body with the actual ingredients. The devotees dipped Tulasi mandris in sandalwood paste and repeatedly offered them at the lotus feet of the Lord. So we'll just read up to the section where he starts his 21 hours of ecstasy, okay? A few more minutes. Anytime you're ready, Vrindavan Chanchapru. Rivo. All right, so they placed Tulasi Mandris at uh, the Lord's lotus feet. So on days like Gorpurnima and on Akadaji days, we offer Lord Chaitanya grains. The Lord does not fast on Akadaji like we do, All right? He is Krishna. In his pastimes, he followed Akadashi. In Jagannath Puri, he taught everyone to, he asked his mother to follow Akadashi. He said, dear mother, I have one request for you. Worship Krishna and follow Akadashi. It's like two for one. He said, worship Krishna and follow Akadashi. That's what he asked her. And in Jagannath Puri, they tried to trick him by bringing Jagannath's remnants of rice during Akadashi. And he said, as soon as Jagannath Prashad comes, you have to honor it. But he honored it by doing kirtan all night until Akadashi was over, and then he honored it by taking it. But as the Supreme Lord Chaitanya, in the deity form, we offer him grains on Akadashi as devotees. So they offered Tulsi Mandris at his feet. After worshiping the Lord according to the rules and regulations prescribed for chanting the 10-syllable Gopal Mantra, they offered prayers. All the Lord's principal associates headed by Advaita fell at the Lord's feet and offered obeisances. Everyone just started falling. Even Advaita Charya, incarnation of Sadashiva, Mahavishnu. Right? You worship the most worshipable. Then you honor all. Tears of love flowed from the eyes of the devotees. The Lord sincerely listened as they offered the following prayers. Jaya 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 Sarva Jagatiranata Tapta Jagatiri Gora Subhadrishtipat All glories, all glories, all glories to the Lord of all the universes. Please glance mercifully on the living entities who are afflicted with the threefold material miseries. Jaya Adihetu Jaya Janaka Shabara Jaya Jaya Shankirtana Ramba Avatar All glories to the original cause and father of everyone. All glories to the Lord who has incarnated to inaugurate the Sankirtan movement. Jaya Jaya Veda Dharma Sadhu Janatran Jaya Jaya Brahma Stambhira Mula Pran All glories to the protector of Vedic principles and saintly persons. All glories to the Lord who gives life to everyone from Brahma to the non-moving living entities. Jaya Jaya Patita Pavana Guna Sindhu Jaya Jaya Parama Sharanadina Bhandu All glories to the reservoir of transcendental qualities and the deliverer of the fallen souls. All glories to the supreme shelter and the friend of the poor. All glories to the cowherd boy who lives in the ocean of milk. All glories to the Lord who manifests his pastimes for the sake of his devotees. All glories to the Lord who is the inconceivable, unfathomable and original truth. All glories to the Lord who is the most gentle form of pure goodness. All glories to the Lord who is the ornament and deliverer of the Brahmana community. All glories to the Lord who is the life and soul of all, including the Vedic principles. All glories to the deliverer of the fallen Ajamil. All glories to he who liberated Putana of her sins. All glories to he who does not see the faults of others and who is the beloved Lord of Lakshmi. 
In this way, all the devotees offered their prayers. Seeing the supreme manifestation of the Lord's form, all his devotees merged in an ocean of bliss. That's what we talked about last class, the ocean of bliss. Lord Gorachandra spontaneously extended his lotus feet, which were worshipped by all the devotees, who then put out his lotus feet. All right. So with that, we'll do Panchatattva Mantra until he's ready for Arti. Then we'll worship Radha Krishna as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, non-different. Then instead of having lunch ourselves, we'll make preparations for Krishna. We have 40 gas burners, you know, 30, 40 burners on this property. 10 in house three, eight in house one, 12 in house two, and four in house four, right? So is my math right? Four. And two more chulas we can, yeah, and we're, we're building outside also. So we can cook for Krishna, many preparations. Okay, when we're done, then we'll come together and prepare for Abhishek. So if we have time, we can continue the discussion of the 24 hours ecstasies. Or if we feel like it, we'll do Kirtan and prepare for Abhishek, all right? So one of us will go to Walmart. I'll go to Walmart and we need to buy more ingredients. You know, this is also part of our class. Everybody, Hari Walmart, Kijai, Hari Bo. Facilitating our service of Krishna. Okay, Nitai Go Pramanandi, Hari Hari Bo.